Ladies and gentlemen, look at that right there. That is a bass. Look at, hang on. At the HQ. Guggen HQ, that's what I love about Texas. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are gonna do some graphing today in the depths, looking for the white perch, the speckled suckalai, the crappie. Recently, we went and planted some crappie houses in a private lake. Today, we're going out on a big public lake. The rain's been really bad up here. There's not a lot of lakes that have clear water right now, so I'm going to the biggest body of water I have close by, and I'm gonna look out in the deeps, talking probably 20, 30, maybe even 40 feet of water, and look for brush piles, look for drops, ledges, look for places crappie are gonna be, and then I wanna try out some of my new dangle poles and some heavier jig heads and try to get down there uh, and use a couple of different techniques to try and catch some crappie today. So in the truck, in the venture wagon, we are loaded down with some, uh, some, some of our new poles. I'm gonna be going over some of those as we get out there. We also got Mr. Rob out on the lake today. I've already spoke to him. He is going bass fishing. He'll figure out one day that the big bass and big old puppies they're hanging around him, crappie. Don't believe me? Used to happen all the time on Fork. Crappie anglers be reeling in their little crappie minnow that's got a, you know, two pound crappie attached. What bam? 13 to 15 pounder. Shop manager Grant, crappie fishing the other day on the lake I'm going to. What bam? 10 pounder on his minner. Anybody just saying, find the crappies, you find the mondos. Here's my old buddy Lunkers TV. Give me a old back end. Uh, appreciate the help. Hashtag Lunkers TV help. A lot of foundations. Don't count it out. There's some good stuff out here. Me and Lunkers TV. The dueling Skitoros. It's turning out to be a nice afternoon. Thank you, Lord. It's been such terrible weather. And I'm gonna do just a lot of looking, y'all. This might be a boring, a boring one. This is where you just wanna get yourself some snacks. Get a little hydration and just look at the graph and mark, 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 mark. And then I'll probably get a new boat uh, in another year and all these awesome waypoints are gonna be on <laughs> that boat because I forget to put a chip in here and save up to that. I think the person that's getting my last silver bullet is definitely getting a few little bonus nuggets in there. But anyway, I'm so impressed with electronics how, how clear it is, and it, it is fun to just sit there and stare at them and see what's uh, what's down there, what's really down there. Just dropping off into 30, there's a lot of activity out here. A lot of fish I'm seeing out there. There's Rob, I think he's heading off into other parts of the lake. This is a nemes nemesis lake for me. Never done well out here, Ray Roberts. Huge lake. I desperately want to figure it out. I want to figure it out so I can you know, it, it's not too far away from our, our uh, headquarters. You can come out here in 20 minutes, but man, you could get lost out here for days. There's so much water. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that right there. That is a bass. Look at, hang on. Let me just zoom in here. Um, excuse me. That is a profile of a bass. If I have ever seen one, that is incredible. This is incredible, this technology. So on some of the old maps, and there's a lot of lakes like this, it, it will show where the state has put out, they call them fish attractors. It's basically brush piles. And sometimes they put them in before the lake is even made. I'm not sure which is the case uh, here, but I just looked up general areas where they are and I'm running with the side scan. Where we launched was really muddy. Um, where I ran into this other arm, the water's pretty clear. And Rob just let me know he had like a four pounder he lost. So that's, that's good news. Really liking this bank where there's supposedly like a dozen, a dozen brush piles or fish attractors somewhere down in this area. So I'm just gonna run this bank with the side imaging and see if I can find anything interesting. There's there's also some standing timber along the bank and I am seeing quite a bit of shad. 
in this area it's a big uh, creek arm so it's got the potential to hold a lot of different fish throughout the year and we just ran up on one so this is definitely one of those huge massive piles right here I mean just monstrous just look at that beastly beastly brush so I'm gonna go over this a little bit and see if um, you know see how, how big it is and maybe just drop something on down there for them crap is oh come on tap it You're sitting right there next to it oh gosh you whacked it I'd love to know what you are what you are down there thought we had our first customer turns out to be my old friend the white bass got a little group of them here off this point and um, I'm just gonna work this spoon above them and see what's if, if I think there's crappie down there just the way they looked on the graph ah another one just tapped it oh dang it I might need to go to uh, to an actual jig try some new tackle here some of the stuff I got at the fun and son tackle show he's uh well first of all i'm using the rods but this bonehead jig heads been reading about these for crappie they look pretty good they've got a sickle style hook on them i've used the sickle style hooks before i, I don't seem to mind them fish don't seem to mind them because the idea is you keep them pegged a little better and uh we're gonna try a new little trailer here i asked the guy what his best selling color was or what he thought the best color was and it was this right here it's like basically look like a daggum candy corn I'm using 10 pound braid and then i've got a six pound fluorocarbon attachment here i'm just gonna go wheel d dual wheeled here man i got signatures all over it should be getting whacked okay Time for a different hole, I think. Jeez. Boy, that didn't take long. Right when I got on the good the goods. Here it comes. Oh, a drum ski. Well, what in the hell? Absolutely smoked it too. That's not what I wanted. Exciting, but it's not the juice. 25 feet down they're not actually on the brush pile they're right behind it i uh i found them i'm just not able to get them to bite pull the drum out of the group but i don't know what it is they're being very fickle I feel very confident that those are crappie signatures the way i'd Originally marked them on the back graph and then came back over them and just the way they're staying here just stick and put In a tight group, but I've tried the jig. I've tried uh, I've tried the jigging spoon uh, They don't want it. This is a tough one today. I told myself I was gonna dedicate to trying to find these crappie out here and daggum that's what I'm doing the top of the pile was kind of high it was like 12 feet high but on the edges it seemed like they were there and got a drop this bank looks really good for bass i kind of want to try it i'm gonna resist the temptation though i want to dial the crappies i think i'm gonna go back to the original big one that i marked Well, y'all, it is a beautiful sunset out there, at least. I'm probably blinded by it, but I'm out on a, 
a ledge here, 40 feet of water. Not a ledge, I'm sorry, it's a point. You can see like an island right there. And uh, I'm gonna take this death stalker. I've just marked a bunch of fish down here. They're suspended over open water, so I think some of them are white bass, but I just wanna, I just wanna have a little fun here. Looks like we got a fish on our bait right now. Come on. Oh, I felt him. I bumped him actually with, that's, that's insane, I could feel that. But um, he got right next to my bait. I bumped it and I hit him. There's about four or five fish close to my bait. Well, I would say this Nemesis Lake of mine continues to be that. Boy, what a tough, tough old bag of corn cobs this one is. <sighs> oh. God, them fish don't even want to be caught down there. Just don't want to be caught. Rufford and corn comes, y'all. My thirst for the knowledge of the crappie is high. You know, I do, I've done bass fishing, early year bass fishing for, I mean, gosh, like 15 years, like pretty hard. Um, I want to try doing crappie fishing in the early season, and I know it could be really good. I've decided I'm going to go meet up with some professionals. Uh, I've gotten an invite to go do something and I want to learn as much as I can. And I'm going to do a, um, a little tour in February where I'm trying to catch a drop. You know, I'm going to take the crispy collector with me, um, but I'm going to go learn. I'm going to take you guys along with me from some pros and we can, uh, we can unlock the sec secrets together because the secrets were hidden today. They were in some of those piles and I could not get them to bite. That trip wasn't it, y'all. That just wasn't it. But over the course of the next couple months, I will be doing more days like this where I just go out and I'm looking at electronics. I'm looking, I'm learning, I'm going to learn how to uh, find these crappie and then when I find them, learn how to catch them. And I, I think I'm going to learn more about bass as I'm doing that, but I've always just focused on bass in the early part of the year. And even though the graph I was looking at today, so amazing, it was, it was crazy how you can see that bass down there. I've seen catfish, literally you can identify species and I'm learning to identify the crappie, the way they're grouped up together and size and everything like that. But there's other technologies out there too that is even more amazing and in real time, like live scoping, that's something I wanna get into this year. And if y'all wanna see that, let me know down in the comments. You point here, you're seeing where the fish are and you know exactly where to cast, how far away they are, see real time reactions, uh, most, Units, most graphs have real-time sonar, but it's not as dialed where you can know the direction. It's just a broad cone and that's all you got. And thank you, Mucho, for staying tuned for each and every one of these vlogs. God bless you. I'll see you.